Hey, what's up? It's your boy, Stephen McCoy, and you are listening and watching Sessions with Stephen. And today we have a very special guest. Uh, you may know her from shows like Jeep, oh, well, films. She does films, uh, Jeepers Creepers, uh, My Wife and Kids, and of course, one of my favorite shows, if not probably my favorite show in the whole wide world, The Soap Opera Passions. That is Miss Lena Cardwell. How are you, actress and writer? <laughs> I'm great. How are you, Steven? Oh, I'm so great. I'm so happy that you decided to come on to Sessions with Steven. Um, you and I have met a few years ago at yeah. the Passions Fest. Yeah, yeah. That was a great I, experience because I, I literally, you, I told you before, I watched you guys every single day at 2 yeah. p.m. on NBC4. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Some of the most fun days of my life on those sets. <laughs> yeah, you have to talk to us about the release of your new book. Um, we're definitely going to get into that, but I know a lot of your fans want to know where have you been <laughs> it's crazy yeah i'm crawling out from under my rock uh well in 2017 uh tracy ross of course you know she played tracy. my mother in uh, passions she's a gorgeous human being inside and out um she kept my secret for such a long time um that my name is actually jennifer leander hazel it isn't Lena cardball uh, i had the name change for a reason um I've been here in Michigan, sort of retracing my footsteps to figure out where I came from and meet my family, my dad's side. Um, there was a lot of trauma there with my mother's relationship with my dad. And so when I was a kid, we left to New York to pursue acting and whatnot, and she changed my name to Lena Cardwell. So I was sort of hiding in plain sight. So that was a whole backstory that I wasn't really fully aware of until I was more closer to an adult. Um, but, you know, I reached out to my brothers and they were like, oh, we got a detective. We were looking for you. Where have you been? And I'm just like, oh, TV <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so I've come back here to meet everyone and, you know, immerse myself in the culture and whatnot. Wow. So I have to now consider you Jennifer, who, which is your... You know what? Some people say Lena, some people say Jennifer. It, that's the craziest thing. And I really don't care. It doesn't... Yeah. I don't care. Well, I mean, it is important that we make sure that we get it right for sure. And, you. Um, you know, people love and adore you um, as we all fall in love with you um, on various shows. But Passion, everyone wanted to know, where, why did she leave Passion? Where did, where did she go, you know? Yeah, you know, the craziest thing about that was it was a simple thing. It was... I believe I booked a movie while I was on Passions and it was a contract with it. My mother wanted me to go and do broaden my horizons and do movies yeah. and move out of soap operas. I didn't really want, I didn't care either way. As long as I was in front of the camera and doing my thing, I was happy. Yeah. So it was a struggle with her. Uh, she did want to see me. She, she was afraid that I would get, you know, typecast or stuck in a role. So yeah. as a manager, and I understand her point of view, as a manager, as my as my mother, she wanted the best. So she wanted me to like leave and try to go further. Right. You know? and, yeah. and we we loved you on Jeepers Creepers. I was so excited. I, I used to be like, oh Simone, Simone is yeah. on Jeepers Creepers, you know. <laughs> the funniest thing about that is there's a scene where I'm running across a, a field with all the guys and we have a joke that the first 10 takes, I smoked all the guys easy. Like, it, they were just like, where did you get those legs from? And it was because I was really scared. When they had Jonathan in the air on the gym and he was flying down, I was actually afraid. <laughs> so that was fear and adrenaline yeah. taking me. <laughs> it wasn't I, until I figured out that they caught up. And you know, there were actually rumors of the reason why that you had left it was because there was, um, you found money that was missing out of your account during uh, your early stages of your career. Now, is that true or? Okay, so I, that's why I left. I left the business because of, you know, allocation, misallocation of funds, um, money was missing. Um, and it wasn't, I wouldn't say stolen so much as given away 
without permission or without keeping track. You know, when I finally look in my account and I want to be independent and I want to buy a house, I want to do this and I want to invest, there's like little to nothing left in there. And that was pretty traumatic for me. So I just mm -hmm. kind of, I'm a very sensitive person. So I just sort of like all my pedals went in and I just said, you know what, I'm just going to leave and do something else. And I told uh, Tracy Ross, I said, you know what, I just want to do backyard barbecues. I just want to hang out with my friends. I just don't want to yeah. be in front of the camera. I just want to just disappear a little bit, not sulk, but just, just be away from it. And so I walked away for a, a, such a long time. Yeah. yeah. And when we were at the Passions Festival in LA, I remember how Tracy definitely seemed to have been embracing you. They all, you can really tell that. Can you believe it? They were, they were like, where have you been? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> you can tell the love that everyone actually loved and cared for and missed you. And yeah. definitely it's, it's really that Tracy was that one for you because. She kept my secret for such it, a long time about the name change. Yeah. She yeah. Did. Yeah. Yeah, I, we all, because uh, you know your fans have been researching you, like, where is she? Like, where has yeah. she, I know you had to see, see it on Twitter. People have been tweeting about your name. Where is she? <laughs> you know what? I actually am not huge on social media. Mm -hmm. um, I think on my Facebook, I have about less than 200 friends. I probably just opened a Twitter account because of my brother maybe a couple of years ago and I'm, it's vacant. It's like a boneyard. I haven't posted anything. So I think that also allowed me to kind of tuck and hide because right. I'm not very like out there. Right. Now, yeah. I also saw you um, when we were at the festival, the Passions Festival back mm -hmm. in 2017, um, mm -hmm. you met Christy Ferris, who was yeah. the replacement for Simone Russell. Yeah, now, yeah. Now, um, how was it meeting her for the first time? It seemed like you both embraced so, each other. She is an effervescent person. She is a ball of just light and positivity. I love hearing her speak. I love everything about her. I love the way she carries herself, the way she yeah. handles herself. We actually met for the first time. This was the second time I met her at the festival. Oh, okay. But the first time I met her, at a, we bumped into each other at a charity event many, many, many years ago. Um, and we sat and we chatted with each other. It was right after my split uh, from NBC. And uh, we, had a, we just had like a little bit of a conversation, but that was it. Um, at the festival, we actually got to have, you know, a longer conversation, get to know each other more. And I just think she's a gem of a person. I really do. I love that because all, it's very... Uh, rare when we see our original star yeah to the replacement star you know yes so absolutely she did a wonderful job she did a wonderful job at yeah it. she really did she definitely did and and you both um coming together and embracing each other with something that i feel um i would hope to see more of you know yeah really um I think now, she did send in my resume quite some time ago, maybe right after that, 2017, she was doing something and she asked Tracy, she goes, do you think it'd be okay if I like submit Lena's resume for this? She goes, let me call her. Doo, doo, doo. She's like, all right, look, don't get mad at me, but we were thinking maybe that you want to do a little acting. Uh, can we put your resume somewhere? And I'm just like, oh, guys, I don't know. <laughs> I love that. That shows a lot of character because without you playing the role of Simone, it's very possible that she may not have been put on that role. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like now that she has the opportunity, it's yeah. given back again, you know? Isn't that, doesn't that speak so much for her? It really does. It really doesn't does. It? I yeah. know Christy and um, she's <laughs> always been a person that's very uh, motivating and things of that nature, so. Yeah. Definitely yeah. Big up to her. Um, now, speaking of giving back, I know one thing that you've always been into is ph philanthropy work, and uh, you teamed up with. Well, you have a you're develop developing your uh, your charity foundation, which is called the Hope and Higher Learning Collective. Yes. Now, yes. if you can talk to us about it and. Um, well, it's in its infancy right now, but the goal is I have a few friends of mine coming together with me. Hopefully I can get some more on board with it. 
Um, it is, I look at my childhood and I look at how creative I've become and I had someone guiding me there. I always had someone cultivating my creative. My mother was just a blessing. Um, she was a wonderful, wonderful, smart woman. And, um, I think that a lot of children, especially in the system, don't have that. And we forget that they are still children because, you know, we put a stamp on them. Oh, you're 18. Oh, you're 19. Oh, you're 21. You're done. You're an adult now. Go ahead and go. Yeah. And these kids are, you know, are at high risk for, you know, prostitution or someone manip coming into their life and manipulating them, drugs, jail, a lot of things that they're at high risk for. Um, and I wanted to provide somewhere, and I know there are other organizations that do that, but I wanted to put my little opinion in there, throw my little chip in the ring. Um, a place that provides them, you know, a little safety and a little guidance to become who they're going to be one day. Because despite being 21, they're still our future. Despite yeah. being 18 years old, they still affect the rest of us. And sometimes yeah. they slip through the cracks. And I just want a place that, you know, grab, hey, I got you, kid. I got gotcha. you. These are your options. Do you want community college? Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to yeah. be famous? Do you want to focus on this? Do you want whatever it is, push them in that direction and sort of mold them and help them, you know? Yeah, I love that. It's almost like um, being a mother to these children. And one thing I'm, I believe I heard through the grapevine is that you are a mom. No. Oh, you're not a mom. Oh, so that's another Crazy. rumor. That <laughs> oh, no. That's a rumor I've never heard. That, oh, you meet a dog mom. That, oh, you might have heard that. I, <laughs> uh, I'm that's a fan of Great Dane, so I've had, you know, Great Dane that I was definitely a mom to. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually one of my books, uh, oh, Jesse and the Hardy. Jesse yeah. and the Hardy. Jesse and, um, yeah. It's yeah. like me as a kid with my dog. Yeah, so guys, she has a, a line of children books. She produced yeah. and written these books, and you've taken your time um, and put a lot of thought into these books. Um, you have to tell us what inspired you to go in this direction to become an author. So I've always been a writer. Um, I wrote a book uh, some when I was 17 and it was about wolves and magic and all of that stuff. Yeah. And I put it on my mother's computer and the computer just ate it and it disappeared. Oh. And that broke my heart. That broke oh. my heart. Like I cried. Everyone was so excited for me to shop it around. It disappeared. So I put away my pen for a long time because I was heartbroken. I was like, I'm never going to write anything <laughs> ever again. I'm not even going to sign a contract. I was like, done. And then my best friend, um, Kara Shea Rose, uh, who actually played the angel on Passions. Oh. Um, we've been best friends since she was nine years old. This Isn't that the craziest thing? A lot of people don't know that, but we're like this. If you actually look on my Facebook, you'll see us like it all, all the time. We're together, oh. definitely. And she recently had a child a couple of years ago and she oh, says- Congratulations. Hey, she's like, I know she's Jolie is just she's like my favorite niece. She's just I love her so much. But anyway, um, she said, "How about we? How about you help me write a book for Jolie?" And I says, "Of course I will. This is my little niece. Of course I will." So we started on it. Um, I got the artwork down. A lot of my artwork for the covers of these are inspired by my paintings. This is actually a painting of mine behind oh, me as well. Hey. I love, I love wow. to paint. Right. I'll get I'll get a paintbrush and I'll disappear for days in the basement. I love that. <laughs> Not bad. Thank you. So we started a book for her and that one book turned into a large body of uh, work. It turned into 22 children's novels. Um, I'm sorry, children's books and four teen series novels and one adult novel. So it's been it's been crazy. And in two months time, isn't that insane? It is. Two months. I literally didn't speak to anyone, was just focused in my computer, painting and getting everything together. And so that's what I have now. I have, uh, I think, five books on Amazon. Wow, as we speak. yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. And more coming out this definitely week. definitely have to check that out. Which one is your yeah. favorite, would you say? I mean, I know they're all your babies. All my babies, Um, let me see here. Well, out of the four here, I do love this one. When no one comes to your party, have breakfast with unicorns. And it's about a little, it's about a little girl that's having her first birthday party. 
and she invites her class, she invites all of her friends, and no one shows up. Um, um, and it's about what her parents, and you hear that on the news, you know, a kid will have a party and no one shows up. So I decided to write a book about it. And she takes, you know, the lemons that she was given and makes lemonade. Her parents invite all of the unicorns in town and they end up having a beautiful sleepover, pancakes on their horns, you know, cake dripping from the ceiling. And it just turns into something that could have been really sad and traumatic and to cause it to blossom into something that was positive. Um, and that's what that book is about. And I love that book. I would say that's definitely one of my favorites. Now, obviously with children's book, um, there are inspiring ways to tell stories, real stories. Right. Did any right. of those books come from your personal experience? Let me see here. There is one, Kayla the Leo, and that one follows lightly a homeless girl making it in life. Yeah. Um, and that one's not out yet. I'm still working at how to soften it and make it, you know, not so harsh uh, for kids um, to swallow. Uh, but definitely that one does mirror my own childhood uh, because we were homeless on the streets of New York before. I booked something really big and could take care of us. I love that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You are definitely in so many different alleys. And hats. Yeah. I've got so many different hats going on. Yes. <laughs> definitely. And one thing that I found, for, for one, I did not know that you were from Detroit. That's actually where That's most yeah. of my family is from. Um, yeah. So who knows? Maybe yeah. we can. We're, we may be cousins. Who knows? <laughs> we could be. You, I have such crazy. a large. Family. I didn't realize until I came back here. I was like, oh, we're my cousins. I'm like, what? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, absolutely. That's yeah. amazing. Now, what were your favorite moments behind the scenes um, of passion? Would you say? Behind the scenes. Um. I would say usually when we would mess up a take and it would cause everyone to laugh. Those are always yeah. fun, like the, the gag takes. Um, behind the scenes, I don't know if there are anything necessarily behind the scenes. I can tell you, um, James was very, James Hyde was very inspiring when I first got the part. You know, because I was, this was my first like- Who played big, big Sam, part. by the way. Yeah, played yeah. Sam. He is, I don't know, if enough people know what a love he is. He is the biggest heart. He and his wife, Su Ling, actually, oh. they're, they're all, his whole family, amazing. Right. But he gave me a couple talks when I first, you know, was hired because I was nervous and I was scared. And it's like, I've always treated every role that I've ever had. And I joke, like, I'm going to get an Oscar. Like, it didn't matter what I was doing. I, I had, I just put everything into it. Just a little bit dramatic. I was, um, often. <laughs> I but that. I don't remember what the talk was, but it definitely inspired me and it definitely calmed me down and it definitely grounded me and centered me as a teenager. Um, so I do have to thank him. I don't know if I've ever thanked him for that. That meant the world to me to give me that speech he did. Wow. I love that. And I know a lot of people want to know, have you lost your passion completely for acting? Will we ever see you again on the screen? Will we ever see you again? So, um, well, I would say no. I think that creativity is in me like blood. Um, I, I see the same, when I'm creating a painting on canvas is the same as creating, you know, a script or creating a character for on screen. Mm -hmm. Anything creative, I will invest my, my all of my time and all of my passion in. Um, so I can't say no to that because I love acting just as much as I love painting, just as I love writing, just as I love creating anything. Decorating, I love to decorate. People don't know that I love to decorate. Um, I've decorated a few of my friends' houses. I was like, oh, I need you to do this. And I get right into it, you know, get my sweats on and anything creative just gives me just so much joy and so much passion. So I can never say no to that. And, you know, me and my grandmother, we would watch Passion together all the time. And one thing that not only my grandmother, but my family, they always said how pretty you were and that you reminded them of the Bratz doll. Did you ever, did you ever hear that before? 
<laughs> you know, I, I, the funny thing is, it's always something doll related. When in yeah. high school, it was either a Barbie or a pers- porcelain doll. Yeah. I used to get, I've heard brats before, but it's always along like, you look like a little doll, you look like a little doll. <laughs> yeah, you know, and um, that's, that means so much to me because I think as a kid, I never thought I was pretty. You know, when you're a little girl, you want to grow up and you want to be gorgeous and you want to be, you know, you want to see what you see on TV. And I, for some reason, I just never felt like that. I always felt, because I was so tomboy, I riding horses, breaking things, spinning my <laughs> knees. So, you know, I just never felt like I slipped into that pretty dainty role. But then some people would say, oh, you look like a little doll. I would, do I really? <laughs> yeah. Did I, you yeah, know? You, so. you definitely are a doll. I know Mackenzie Westmore recently uh, spoke on her experiences on passion. And she had to deal with a lot of weight. Um, issues well with criticism from that um have you had to deal with any of that in the industry where they're you know you you may be too dark or you know your hair is not frizzy enough or whatever (laughs) the only thing that i really recall that traumatized me was i remember and i don't know if it was like a chat room or blog or something back then But someone was discussing, I think I was 17 or 18, discussing my chest area. And it was, oh, they're fake. They're not even hers. There's no way they're they're that, blah, blah, blah. And I didn't know about it until a friend from high school called me and said, so there's this whole thing about your chest. And I'm like, what do you mean? So I like log on and I saw it and I was like, I was crying. I was like, why would they even be talking about that? Who wants to know that personal information? And he says, don't worry, Jen. I put my two cents in there. I told them that they were real. I know you from high school. I'm like, thanks, uh, friend. I love that. It's always good so, to have real friends like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think so. Um, when it comes to skin color, though, my mother was adamant about me not caring. She, um, she always made sure I was secure with my skin color. She would always call me her beautiful chocolate baby. Yeah. I never yeah. grew up with the dark skin, light skin thing. Um, I know other people have, so I've listened to them, but my mother definitely was hypervigilant about that. She didn't want me to ever make someone else feel bad because of this color or not. I just, I just don't under, I, so I don't understand it. And I, and I refuse to entertain it. I don't. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I definitely understand that. Wow. I'm just so happy that you're back and we can actually witness your creativity through painting, through painting, through art. Yeah, uh, that's amazing, and we definitely know that we want to see more of you on the screen. I know that I do. Uh, even your old, former co-stars, they like you. You have to come back. It was just little things that I caught that they were whispering yeah. to you. And yeah. you were, um, I just remember uh, rubbing your arm and rubbing your like, literally yeah. embracing you. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I was a little scared. I was so nervous uh, when I first went. Yeah. I almost didn't come. I almost didn't come. Uh, but my friends were like, you better, you better go. And I'm just like, what if, what if they hate me? What if no one remembers me? What if, and I I got such a warm welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Someone said, I I remember you, either you said it or you thought no one would remember you or something. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's me. (laughs) Yeah. No one scared me. I'm like, what if they don't even? <laughs> no, we most so, certainly do and we yeah. want to see more of you what is next for you moving forward uh, this nonprofit, making it a success these yeah. books making them a success if i can get a couple of these books i have one called tomlet it's called uh tomlet the french toast omelet i'd love to somehow get that into a cartoon or something like that yeah, i think that's what i was thinking idea. Right, um, voiceovers. I do know that I did a children's uh, book. I don't remember the name of it when I was a teenager. I did the voiceover for that. So yeah. I would love to do something like that and explore yeah. that. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I love that. And um, this is definitely a great direction to go into. I mean, we have people like Netflix, Peacock, and all of them. So I think you should definitely try to I transition would love- into I remember sitting on the couch just recently with my boyfriend. I'm thinking, watching because of you know COVID, you're watching hundreds and hundreds of hours of shows because you have nothing else to do. I was yeah. like, babe, I could totally do that. Oh 
oh my God, babe, I would love to do that. Babe, this is a great role. I wish I could do that. You know what I mean? So right. I'm sure at some point I'll put the acting hat on and try to slide back into that role. <laughs> I, we definitely can't wait. Thank you so much for coming on to Sessions with Steven. And uh, maybe one day you will be a mom so everyone can stop the rumors right now. She's I not know. a mom yet. She's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Stephen. Absolutely. Hey, subscribe now.